This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, William H. Berg Oral History Center sounds like something I should never have gone to in school. Would you rather I say PD-1? PD-1. That sounds important. At least as long as it's not PDA with Santa. Yeah, well, let's just keep that among us. Fair enough. And insert music here whenever I remember to do the music. (laughs) (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 258 for Thursday, the 1st of October, 2020. This is a show two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, no guests this week, but... I, I don't know. I just didn't hit the button in time. Like, how you doing, Kent? <laughs> Jack is our guest this week, uh, in the in the form of whiskey sour. And he's wearing well, a crown. It's my guest, I guess. You're not using Jack for your cocktail. Uh, no, I'm using Crown Royal because me and Jack don't get along. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I could have um, used friends, uh, I could have yeah. used Jameson, but I had a feeling that Junior would come through the the podcast and kick my ass for wasting good Jameson on a whiskey sour. <gasps> yeah, fair enough. Although fair enough. Uh, Jamie and Ginger is pretty good. Have you ever had that? Jamie and Ginger. Yeah, you take, you take ginger a, as in like ginger root something? Uh, what are we talking about? Ginger ale. So I don't like ginger oh. ale. And I uh, I don't want to say I don't like Jameson, but he, uh, Jameson is too akin to Jack Daniels. Um, but you put Jameson in equal parts with ginger ale over ice, and I will sip that all night too. That does not sound bad. Uh, on my trip to Dublin, I had quite a bit of Jameson. Uh, Jameson in your coffee. Jameson as a shot. Jameson as a, you know, whatever. Like it's... Steak sauce. Uh, between Jameson... Yeah, Jameson and Guinness were, were the staples Yeah, uh, on that trip. So, yeah. yeah. All right. That sounds good. I, I That should be a cocktail one night. Yeah. Jameson and ginger. Jamie ginger. Um Yeah. Hey, dude, uh, like you put a big thing in here. Like there's a link in here that's actually like. That's what she said. No, she didn't. Uh, So, yeah. So uh, you're referring to the William H. Burge Oral History Center. So I had the honor this past Saturday to be interviewed by a college student um, who, as part of their assignment, they had to interview a veteran. And since I'm a veteran, I guess I qualified. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So the the project, I had to sign a, a release form for it, actually, because not only is it part of the class assignment, but also the interview is going to be submitted to the aforementioned William H. Burge Oral History Center, where the interview will be archived and available for, uh, you know, for researchers, for, I mean, I guess for your entertainment, if you like listening to oral histories and interviews and things like that. Um, but it'll be there for posterity. And I was super duper honored that, uh, I was asked to do that. That's awesome. How long was so, the interview? Yeah, what's, uh, so th- it was predicted that the interview would go about an hour at most. Okay. Um, uh, my talkative ass went almost an hour and a half. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't know how much he's going and, to trim And that down was just the first just question, gonna... right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, oh, you have a question too? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, um, I, I had a lot of fun. It was very enjoyable. Um, I, I don't talk a lot about my military service to people, but mm. if you ask me about it, like, oh, boy, strap in. <laughs> like, <here we> go. <laughs> Um, so it was great. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing the finished product because, of course, he's going to produce it and probably edit some things down a little bit. Right. And I'm, I'm looking forward to actually sharing that link here once I, uh, you know, once it's published and it's out there uh, to listen to. I'll, I'll definitely share that with the RMP audience. Cool. Um, Tell me about this PD1 thing, man. Uh, mm, are you ready for this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> can't, you're not going to have a lot to say about this, but I can't not. Okay. Where the fuck are we as a country right now? Mm. If you watch mm. this first presidential debate, 
you had that's why you that's why you abbreviated it got it you have to understand that we have a choice between a completely non-presidential president and anything else and the choice has got to be the anything else like i'm not going to sit here and 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 talk about how awesome biden is because i really don't think he's that awesome but i think he's a hell of a lot better than the trash fire that trump has been for the last four years I don't know how to reconcile in my mind just how far, how much disregard Trump has for the Constitution, for norms, for anything political. And that would be great if he was smart enough to affect a positive change and to make the system truer to the original document in a way that, that the systems are upheld. I understand that everybody has problems with politics, but this guy cannot be the fucking answer. There's no way this lumbering idiot, this schoolyard bully with his pants in a wedgie, has any idea, any iota of ability to bring us back to where we need to be as a nation. And I'm not even saying that I was around at the time we need to return to. I don't necessarily think we need to return to anything, but we need to keep progressing towards something better. And he is not it. And if you... If you don't want to watch the debates, and I urge you to watch Trevor Noah's live reaction right after it, or the Late Show, right? They did a, a recording right after it. Watch one of those. Watch both of them. It's that'd be about twenty minutes of material. It's hilarious, and it shows you exactly what's wrong with the process and with that particular candidate that just happens to be our current sitting president. Fuck Trump, right? In his bloody urethra. All right, so we got Amos's opinion uh, on politics. Um, cool, man. Um, tell me about uh, <laughs> you, you know no you know what I'm gonna give you a break. I'm gonna give you a break. Um, Among Us. Have you played the game Among Us? I will ask you that. Do you remember my reaction when you mentioned Fortnite? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think so. Same, um, same reaction. Something like, yeah, like I heard of it. Uh, don't care. <laughs> something along those lines. No, it was more like, oh, yeah, I've heard of it. My son is addicted to it. It takes up all his time. Ah. He's not getting the shit done he's supposed to be doing. Fuck that game. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so I've, I'm assuming a similar reaction. Um, so I Identical. played Among Us the first, for the first time uh, this past week during the uh, Diamond Club game night. Uh, actually, the the after stream Discord party, I guess, is is when I played it. Um, and um, for for mobile, it's free. It's mm -hmm. a five dollar uh, uh, game on Steam, yep. which is pretty. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, five dollars uh, on Steam is pretty good. But play it for free. Did you buy it on, on your Steam? smartphone? No, I played it on my smartphone. Okay. And um, <laughs> it's pretty good, man. It's fun. It is super fun. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it would be that much fun playing with randos. Um, a, most of the fun is actually just, you know, yelling at your friends and trying to judge how well your friends can lie and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, the games themselves are pretty quick. They only take like, I don't know, five or ten minutes usually. Then why is my um, boy doing that shit for like hours at a time saying he's just trying to finish? Because it's addictive, and um, yeah, because as soon as you finish one game, you want to roll right into the next one, and it goes, it's such a smooth, like, all right, let's get the next one going, all right, here we go, and there's not a whole lot of setup to it, especially if you've got the same players that are just playing over and over again, like it just, one game rolls into the next, and it's it's a blast, uh, find some friends, play it on mobile, and uh, it's good times, man. Is it cross-platform? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was playing it on, on mobile. I think most of the people that I was playing with were actually playing in Windows through Steam. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, you can you can load it up in your Android device. Like, it it doesn't matter. Like, you, you're all in there. It's, it's just like Jackbox games where you get a room code, throw the room code in there, and boom, you're off. Like, it mm. doesn't matter what you're playing it on. Okay. Maybe I'll try it. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Like just just to try it once, like with uh, Diamond Club Game Night. I have so many other at, uh, addictions. I don't need to add. Twitch.tv slash W Scott is one. 
That is the, yep. uh, that's my game night plug. So check that out on Friday nights. Um, last week I told you I was, I went up to the North Pole. Yeah, this week right. I went up there and this weekend I went up there. We took the littles with us and so they could visit Santa. So we never even showed them the video we had made. I did oh. get the promo plug done for uh, the streamathon. I meant to have it ready tonight, but my NAS was acting up, so I had to get that fixed, and it didn't get fixed till yesterday. So I just haven't had time to get that uploaded. But uh, hopefully tomorrow it'll be available. Uh, Bit.ly/rmp discord. It'll be somewhere in there tomorrow. I'll make that a goal. Excellent. That um, is super awesome. It'll be in the, uh, um, the well. This is channel. actually a good play, a good time to to talk about it. Um, so I've actually been working on the Diamond Club uh, New Year's Eve streamathon, uh, behind the scenes materials, getting mm -hmm. the the schedule ready and things like that. Uh, pretty much the only thing left is to uh, go ahead and pull the trigger on um, on the sign up sheet, uh, mm -hmm. which is going to happen. Well, you know what? We're going to talk about it in the post show. Okay. So if you're not a member of our Discord, once again, that's bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Jump in there. Uh, talk about the, the New Year's Eve Streamathon with us there because it's going to go live very, very, very soon. Yeah, it's October. Like, it's time. It's, this is... like For us, this is like, oh, shit, we're so far behind the curve. For the rest of Diamond Club, <laughs> it's, it's like... It's crunch time. For, for the rest of Diamond Club, it's like, dude, you guys have like... You have like months... Before you, need, before you <laughs> yeah. need to start this, you have more than two weeks till this thing starts. Like, what are you guys stressing about? <laughs> yeah, is it is it tomorrow? Yeah. No, chill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but uh, also also happened to go out and snag some pictures of the Northern Lights. So, and that was really awesome. Shared a few pictures on on Twitter. Yep, yep, I did. I saw one, in fact, and yeah. um, it looks very professional, like something you might see in a magazine. I was pretty proud of it. Like, I was out there for a couple hours. Um, it's not so when you watch videos of the northern lights you see it and they're all swirly and stuff but you know it's like sped up you know it's like a, it's a composite mm -hmm. video mm -hmm. it's very rare for me in my experience where you get to see the the ribbons is what they're called ribbons like actually dance where they move quick enough for you to really perceptively see it with the naked eye you can look at mm -hmm. it and you can see it, it's shifting but it doesn't dance there's no like major movement right Sure. They were dancing that night. Oh wow. Like really? This okay. huge ribbon was above me. These well, multiple layers of a ribbon. And of course, the night I the uh, the next night, you know, we left in the next morning. That night people went out there and they were actually getting pictures of the purples and shit like that that I've never even seen. Oh man. Oh man. Like it's uh I, I I'm gonna make that a goal. And I also have another goal. So this is something really, really geeky. We have a an associate, an associate, and a, an, an acquaintance, an acquaintance. I wouldn't call him a friend. Like we're not, but we, we don't, we don't have like reach out to him or anything. He yeah, had a sure. little, he had a little app about taking pictures. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I don't believe in New Year's goals, like New Year's Eve, like uh, uh, resolutions. Uh -huh. But I want to make it a personal goal that sometime, probably right around December twenty first, since it's the uh, the the solar New Year, mm -hmm. the the winter solstice. It is also known as the solar New Year. Um, I am. I, that's totally technically not the name, but fuck it. That's what I'm going to call it. I, <laughs> I I want to I want to take a picture every day, edit it, and post it. Every single day. Just one picture. I'm not doing like sheets and sheets. But the rules being that it needs to be taken, edited, and posted on the same calendar day. Okay. And I want okay. to do that like every day. I might have to start with like every week or, or something like that. But I, I, want to, I want to like actually work on my fucking photography. Because every time I do something with it, I love it. God, I love photography. It's so fun. It's so yeah interesting trying so to for your trying to picture in your head and then put that through the hardware to capture something that someone else can look at and see what you had pictured in your head. It's it's phenomenal. So for your goal though, are you talking about like starting now and just like making that a life habit, or or is it like every day for a year, every day until the year ends? Like what are what are we looking at? 
Uh, well, I just want to keep doing it. Okay, so perpetual. Yeah, just just until okay. either I get bored of it or I have no more ideas or until I say screw it, this is just isn't worth my time. Like it's it's an open ended goal. I get you. Okay. I look for. Are you going to post those on Instagram or what? What are your thoughts there? Um, I don't use my Instagram for anything, so it seems like a good place to put it. <laughs> <laughs> a photographer putting photos on Instagram. That is such a novel idea, Amos. Uh, uh, I think you should pursue that. Yeah. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like a place that was meant for some shit like that. <laughs> I know. If only somebody would take advantage of that platform's strengths. Yeah. You know, you know what? But I could, I could maybe if I get some really, really good pictures, I could post them on a private forum only available to people who are willing to donate to the cause. Um, where where, uh, where oh, do we do something oh, like that? Only fans. Are you talking about OnlyFans? Well, do you have an OnlyFans? Only, OnlyFans is really if I was taking pictures of myself and then broadcasting them live or in a recorded fashion that other people could enjoy <laughs> later. I'd, uh, I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to, to starting an OnlyFans. I just don't think anybody would like what they saw there. <laughs> I wouldn't sign up. I, I, I'm just gonna let you know. I, uh, I'm, I, I bet you would. You would sign up under some pseudonym just to see if I was actually on there fucking smaking my putt or something like that. <laughs> Realizing that it's just, it's just me looking at the camera, going, "I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here," for thirty seconds at a time each day, and be like, <laughs> "Okay, I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh man. That's yeah. funny. So, um, how about I, I've got a better idea, dude. Oh yeah. Since you've already got a subscription-only account by way of uh, Patreon.com, mm. I would suggest that you put something awesome like that on Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery. That sounds like something we could do. Um, I mean. It's only natural because the things that you can find there already are bonus material things like exclusive pre-shows, post-shows, interviews, yep, um, classic videos from when we were, oh, the aforementioned uh, 20-year-olds, <laughs> um, all, all kinds of crazy we stuff. We weren't there. even 20 then. Yeah, yeah. We were, like, you want we to talk not... ancient ritual misery history? Like it's there at patreoncom slash ritual misery. We were nineteen when we did that video. We were barely legal to agree to do anything. <laughs> yeah, if you want, yeah, that's a good advertisement. If you want to see some barely legal teens, go to patreoncom slash ritual misery. <laughs> barely legal ritual misery. Jesus! Oh my God. That All is right. um, that is a way I have not thought about Patreon.com oh. slash Rachel ever. Here's another thing. For, from now until the end of the year, we are unpausing our Patreon account. We're going to let you pay for it. Every bit of money that we bring in through our Patreon is going to go towards Extra Life. It's going to go so towards there, the So this is the official notice then, right? Yeah. So, Mostly because so I think so I forgot to pause October back in September. So, Yeah. <laughs> So, so this next month, so this next month, um, everybody's going to get charged for uh, for their patronage. Yep. Which um, I think most most people they'll they'll see that their wallets are one dollar lighter. Yep. Per month, uh, which I think is great. Um, number one, we're not asking people to to give us a ton of money. Uh, we just like to see the numbers of, of of people, right? Like we'd like to see our community grow. Um, and second, since we're going to be giving that money to charity for the rest of the year, hey, uh, the more the merrier. And uh, if you want to bump it up uh, more than a dollar a month, like we're not stopping you. Go right. ahead and do it. And in and, and, and true Brian Brushwood fashion, this is a total scam to get you to bump it up for the, next, for the rest of the year and then forget to, to bump it back down. So then it actually helps us out. <laughs> So you don't have to give that away. Oh, I mean, and I knew I fucked up the Brian Brushwood part somewhere. Yeah. Oh man. Um. Yeah, dude. So uh, I think there's another button you got to push over there. I, I was Good. pushing the buttons to see if I'd actually paused it. Pause. 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 Uh. I. I. I don't remember. I can't find it now. Shit. I thought I did, but now I'm not. I. I don't. I don't know. I suck, man. I suck. 
<laughs> Fuck it. Your, well, turn. You know, your turn to either suck. Either way. Um, so. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Games. Games. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. <laughs> See, it's your turn to suck. So this week, I I figured that uh, that we would just play Would You Rather. Oh. Um, I had I had about um, oh I don't know fifteen minutes to throw the show together tonight. <laughs> so I went with something very simple. So if you would. Uh, don't show it to the audience, uh, but it, it, your own private screen over there. Go ahead and pull the link up that I posted for Would You Rather. And perhaps in another screen, you could pull up this random number generator that I threw in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take turns asking a Would You Rather question. Uh, okay. The the page that we're using has 250 would you rathers on it mm-hmm. and we're going to do the rng thing okay. so that we're not sitting here like hmm, which one do i want to ask Let we're just gonna be like if, if, if number seven shows up you just read number seven off how'd you know it was number seven is this shit rigged <laughs> all right. um all right so do you do you want to be asked one first or do you want to ask first i will ask first because i'm not usually in that position okay Sounds good. All right. Um, Let's go with... I'm going to scroll all the way down here because there's so many on this fucking page. (laughs) 250 of them, to be exact. Would you rather forget your significant other's birthday every year or forget your anniversary every year? (laughs) So, just to restate to make sure I've got this right. Would I rather forget my SO's birthday every year or forget my anniversary every year Uh uh-huh i'm gonna go ahead and choose forget anniversary every year because i usually do that anyway (laughs) and uh i have i have a partner in crime over here that does a good job reminding me of (laughs) hey you know what next week is um so that one's covered but if i forgot her birthday Mm. that is my ass (laughs) so i would yeah. So I'm so I'm going I'm going with uh, I would much rather forget the anniversary. I <laughs> hmm. I think I'd rather go with anniversary. But see, that's impossible. Like it's I, I'd go anniversary. Okay. Yep, cuz I'd only yeah. I'd only really miss one out of every 4 years anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're uh, <laughs> you're a leap year anniversary. So, right. yeah, there you go. Um, all right, your turn, dude. All right, man. Uh, so I'm gonna roll the imaginary die over here. I got number 115. So let's Ooh. see. Let's see what 115 is. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, this is a this is a fun one. Would you rather be able to control fire or water? Water. Why? Why water? There's more because it didn't say create water or fire. It just says control it. There's plenty more water around than there is fire. So it's just a logical thing. If like if you're gonna give me some random power, I don't have to be well, do you wanna be able to control titanium? Bitch, I don't know where titanium is. <laughs> but I know there's water. Okay. There's water in my glass right here. There's water like I get pissed and there'd be water there. Like we could I could I could always use that. I can't always make fire. So if it's just controlling yeah. one or the other, totally going with water. If it's creating it as well, fire. Uh, my yeah, I'd be afraid to like accidentally create it though, because like if you just like, I don't know, uh, you know, you can't always control when you fart, right? So if you every time you farted, you made fire, like, ooh boy, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, you could actually burn some shit down. Um, but I mean, if you, if every yeah, time I, you, if every time you farted, it created water, not much better. <laughs> well, <laughs> some of our listeners might have that experience. So I know, and exactly, like I, I'm so saying, it's not good either way. Yeah, no. So I'm gonna side with you on this one. I think I would. I think I would choose water as well. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. What do we got? What, what's next? Uh, 56. Uh, 56. We're going, would you rather have a unibrow or full back of hair? <laughs> so I get like, 
I got to go with unibrow, dude, because I kind of have a unibrow already. And like, I, I got to keep that thing like trimmed up and take, taking care of it. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I would do with a full back of hair. <laughs> like that's, I mean, I, I'm just picturing like George the Animal Steel. Uh, uh, I just had a rug on my back. I, you went digital yeah. again. Like um, it would probably help. It probably helped me in the winter time, I guess, if I had a full back of hair. But uh, not in not in uh, New Mexico, it wouldn't. <laughs> well, and it'd really suck point. in the summertime. <laughs> it'd be really bad. You just uh, had to wring it out, like you just had to like try to get reach behind there and just wring out that rug. Oh my god, gross! <laughs> All right, what you got? All right. Uh, let's see next one. I rolled a 233 this time, so toward the end of the list here. All right, 233 reads, would you rather only be able to write using finger, point, finger paint or only be able to text while wearing mittens? That's a complex one. Th this one, like, really gets your imagination going here. Would finger. you rather only be able to write using finger paint or only be able to text while wearing mittens? Finger paint. Okay. And because it doesn't say anything about voice to text. So I'm assuming that's that's outside the question scope. I text way more than I write by yeah. an order of magnitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, same. Um, yeah. Like Plus, I have to write at work, uh, occasionally, like just like jotting notes occasionally. But I think on those occasions, like I, I, I could bust out the, I could bust out the paints. Like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Like I'll just have like like large sheets of construction paper and like a bunch of paper towels laying around. And... Why, why do you have a Why do you have a stack of four foot wide construction paper? <laughs> that, that's my sticky pad. <laughs> I'm sitting in the conference room, like at the conference table, like I just got like stacks go. of art supplies. <laughs> like, like Kent, what are you doing? Um, taking notes. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, that's amazing. That'd be worth it just for that. Yeah. Oh, dude, I might do that one day, just just for the hell of it. Like, like we. No, 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 no. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. I was gonna say. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna say it anyway. I started. How, I like, how hard would it be to shred years. those notes, though? I, dude, I don't know, but we we should make up like dares like that, like things that we could actually pull off and not get in trouble for, but like get looks and. But definitely questions. be awkward, like picking up your yeah. kid from school wearing high heels. Yes, yes, exactly. Stuff exactly like that. Like that is, that's uh, that's that's an idea for later. <laughs> All right. Would you rather go to the moon or go to Mars? Oh, I mean, this one for me is pretty simple. It's it's Mars for sure, uh, because I spent my childhood. I probably told this story two or three times on Ritual Misery before. My childhood, I wanted to be the first person to walk on Mars. I wanted to be the Neil Armstrong for Mars mm. uh, throughout my childhood. Like being an astronaut was my like my life quest until I figured out. You know, I I got into high school, got lazy and stupid and and realized how much work it was to achieve that. And I was like, yeah, nah, nah, I'm good. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Mars. I would rather go to Mars. Going to the moon. It's a shorter trip. Yeah, and I'm claustrophobic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's exactly where I thought you would go with that. Um, yeah, that would still suck for you. Like, yeah, a, a trip to, to the moon takes a couple days. It's yeah. Like, it's, uh, it's not a quick uh, out but it, and back. But it's not months. It's not six months to get to Mars. Right. right Although, right, I mean, uh, assuming you wouldn't be in the, in a lunar capsule when you're going to the, to Mars, you know, you'd probably be in a bigger ship. Like, if it was like, um, uh, what, what was that movie with fucking Matt Damon in it? Um, it was a book, um, the Martian? Yep. The Martian. Like, if it was their ship, I'd probably rather, rather go to Mars just for the luxury of it. Like, there's mm. plenty of space to move around. I wouldn't feel cramped. I wouldn't be, you know... Um, but with current technology, moon. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. I, I, I see your point, but uh, I still, especially if I could be the first person on Mars. Like yeah, yeah. that's my. Uh, that's it. That's that's. Imagine if be. you could be the first chick on Mars. <laughs> There's a. 
<laughs> there's actually there's a new Netflix series about that. Actually, no, no. I'm, I'm saying, what, imagine if you could be the first chick on Mars. Would you do it? I know what you were saying. I know what you were saying. Would you do yeah. it? There's too much in that question, dude. <laughs> like, if you could be the first chick on Mars, would you do it? I have no comment. I'm not answering the question. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit all right i rolled 87 for you let's uh let's scroll all the way back up here to 87 all right we've got would you rather your whole body turn blue when you're nervous or sweat profusely all over when you're nervous blue blue i fucking hate sweating for no reason like, you know, when you're sick and you're just sweating, you're not hot. You're not, you're just, just fucking sweating. Or when you're like super hungover and everything's working right. Like you've, you're, you're already past like the fucking the sickness of it. But for whatever reason, you just can't stop sweating. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or when you're just like on a small walk and all of a sudden you're just sweating because your body's like, oh, we're exercising. We're going to pump out all the exercise equipment, including all these sweat glands, get them working. And <laughs> plus... Plus, blue doesn't smell bad. You can't come home from blue being blue and, and your your wife or significant other be like, oh, you got to get in the shower right now. I'm blue, da ba dee da ba da. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm totally I'm totally doing blue. Like, and, and think about it, man. You know me. If I'm nervous, I like to draw attention to myself because it takes my, my own attention off the fact that I'm nervous. What better way than just be like, boom. Ah. I'm blue, da ba dee da ba da. <laughs> right. I would learn the dance and everything. Like, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. What about you, man? Yeah. No, I, I got to concur, man. Uh, sweat smells and it's uncomfortable. And nah, like, nah, nah, nah. Like, I could, I could be blue and I could say I'm cosplaying for, um, for Avatar. Or I could be like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying out for the Blue Man group and you know, just start, like, you know, making drum sounds or something. Just call me fucking Papa Smurf. Like, there you go. Yeah, call me Big Papa. Yeah, uh, uh, like like being blue is so much better than sweating. Like, how's this even a question? I know. And I knew a girl in high school that I was highly attracted to until she and and I hate to say that this is what caused it, but she her hands sweat so much that she, everything was damp all the time. Oh uh, yes. Like yes, her yes. No, her homework papers were damp. Like you like every like and I know it was a medical condition. It's not her fault. Yes. I can't. I'm not making yeah, fun of it. Yeah. I'm just saying that it was off-putting enough that I no longer felt a interest in pursuing that relationship after I, I realized that. Yeah. 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 And yeah, not her fault, but it, yeah, it is off-putting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's unfortunate. All right. Would you rather break out in uncontrollable dance, uncontrollable dance every time someone hums or never be able to sing again? I don't wow. know. I don't know how this is a choice because neither one of us can sing as it is. Exactly. So, so the <laughs> obvious answer is, yeah, never sing again. However, if I was a singer, like if I could actually sing and sound good, right? This sounds like a terrible choice. I, I wouldn't even say I sound good. If you sing. could sing and be tolerable, this would be a horrible choice. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because, because it sounds. Just like like a like a donkey, like in its death throes right. of misery. Like uh, when I sing, like uh, the, the, what yeah, what this, what cruel world is it that both of us love karaoke so much and neither one of us can carry half a fucking tune? Uh, oh shit! Like, yeah, like and uh, Curtis Lorac in our chat. He he knows he knows because the last time I sang karaoke, I was with him. <laughs> <laughs> in Austin, yeah. and uh, <laughs> as fun as it was, I don't think I got any applause. I, I think Curtis like might have given me like the courtesy golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> the the Curtis courtesy. Yes, exactly. The All Curtis right. courtesy. I like that. What you got, man? All right. So the next one from me. Oh, I got to scroll all the way to the end again. You got number two twenty nine. Boom. Is uh, do, 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 229 reads. Would you rather stay in a room that's super brightly lit for an entire week or stay in a room that's kept almost pitch black for an entire week? Oh, that's easy. I'm going pitch black. 
And I'll tell you why. It said almost pitch black. That means after a while, there's enough light in there to at least know that like I don't have someone else in the room with me and I can sleep. Yep, 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 yep. This you is an me, easy choice for yeah, me as yeah. well. You, same, you, you put same me in a reason. bright room and I'm fucking dying of a headache after two hours and then it just doesn't stop? Fuck off. Yep, yep. And I like that. Like, I'm perfectly comfortable in the dark. And you nailed it when, when you pointed out that it says almost pitch black because after... Like even in the, like as close as you can get to pitch black and not be pitch black after a couple of hours, dude, like you can see not well, obviously right. like not enough to read, but you can see. Um, it's not like so, the, pen, yeah. the pit and the pendulum where there's, it's just completely black. Yeah. Well, so this is, yeah. Anyway, this is an easy one. Easy. Um, Oh, where, where, where was it? Where was it? It was stupid. Yeah, eighty-three. <laughs> Would you rather only have a GPS with weak signal or have to use only maps? I'm assuming oh. it's meaning paper maps. Yeah, I mean, I'm super comfortable using maps. Uh, I mean, I'm an old Rand McNally guy myself. Right. Um, so this is, I mean. So well, a weak signal GPS, like I know the pain of that because uh, you and I were actually pretty early adopters of, of geocaching. And um, the GPS that I bought, while it was a cool ass piece of tech at the time, um, its antenna was not great. So I know what it's like to get out there trying to find this, this cache and you think you're close, you think you're within 10 meters and nope, never mind, you're like half a kilometer away. Oh, wait, nope, just kidding. You're about 20 meters away. Like, that shit sucks. I'd rather have the map. Here's uh, splitting the hairs. Okay. It says a GPS. It does not say a GPS system with a map or anything else. It just says the GPS. Mm -hmm. Okay. A GPS by itself with no points of reference is a complete fucking waste of your time, especially one with the weak signal. That is true. If you're lucky, true. it'll give you a compass, but I'd still rather have the map every fucking day. Yeah. 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 I've, yeah. I can, I can do, I can do simple navigation with, with a, if you give me a map and a compass, I can, I can do simple navigation. I can get myself out of the woods. I can, I, like, I, can, I would do just as well without the compass, but yeah, give me, just give me the map. Well, yeah. But I mean, if I was, if I was trying to go to like X marks the spot, like give me a compass and a in a, a map. I I'm yeah I'm decent enough with it. Like right right yeah. I, G- we, GPS signals means inaccurate uh, signal, and I just not so you not can, that. What I'm saying is you can use a compass uh, effectively enough to actually make note of it. My usage of a compass, like I would just be waiting until noon every day to to mark the fucking the shadow on the stick and just go the other direction. Like that's. Like, <laughs> right. having a compass doesn't doesn't necessarily increase my abilities to use map beyond the stick in the sand that's that's what i'm saying i gotcha i gotcha like all right either way um, i'm gonna know right, where north in... is what's that either way i'm gonna know where north is right all right uh your next one is would you rather lick your best friend's foot or let a stranger lick your foot Oh, let a stranger lick my foot. Oh, yeah, my feet are gross. Like, fuck it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, they can have all fucked up teeth and, like, shit oozing out of their mouth or whatever else. Lick my foot. I'm going to wash that shit off and be done with this. Licking, yeah, yeah. licking you or Rick's feet? I mean, one of those is occasionally a turn on. <laughs> oh, oh, that's sweet of you to say that, Amos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that- yours, Jackass. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no way. No, no stranger look, can, look, can look my dude. Can do- yeah, so there's there's not enough caveats on this or or conditions, uh, but just as stated, it like it all everything else being equal, where it's like, all right, uh, tongue touches foot is enough to complete the task, um. Or, you know, or lick it for a full minute like you're having an ice cream cone. If it's equal on both sides, um, I think uh, Stranger Licking My Foot is going to win every fucking time. Yep. Um, but if it was like, okay, you either got to like make love to somebody's foot with your tongue 
or a, or no, no 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 like a stranger makes love to your foot with their tongue for half an hour or your tongue touches your best friend's foot for a second and and uh check that box well with caveats i'm gonna go with that one uh because not only does it not appeal to me to lick somebody's foot gross uh, but it also is dis a disgusting idea to me to have my foot being touched by someone else's mouth, let alone their tongue. Um, I'm going to go the other way. Unless it's one very specific instance, like one very specific circumstance, I'm going with the stranger licking my foot all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that uh, one particular instance has no business being on air on this podcast. <laughs> we are a, we are a, a well... We're not a kid friendly show, but we're not we're not triple X rated either. We're not, we're not NC seventeen. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant Muffin, for joining the chat. He's like, This is where I join in? Yeah. What the fuck? Um yeah, right. so let's do one more each, Amos. Okay. Uh we started with you, so let's go ahead and um you give me one more and then I then I'll I'll follow up with one final one for you. That's what she said. <laughs> Indeed. Would you rather walk five miles every day and live to be 100 or eat cake every day and live to be 65? Would I rather do what and live to be 100? Would you rather walk five miles every day oh. and live to be 100 yeah. or eat cake every day and live to be 65? Oh, dude, I don't mind walking. I'll walk five, five miles a day li and live to be 100. Like, Hell yeah, that's 35 more years, man. That's like, what, 40-something percent longer life? Now, what if... I'm going to modify just a little bit here. It's guaranteed that you'll live to be of that age. If... What? Like, if I eat cake, I'm guaranteed to die once I hit 65? Yes. And Sometime during that year. Uh, I see. I and see. if if and, you and, walk five miles every day, you're guaranteed to live 100 years. You'll die yeah. sometime during that hundredth year. That's actually that's how I that's how I I took the question anyway. So yeah, my answer is absolutely the same. I'm going with the cake and the 65. Uh, because fuck long life, I will have my cake. No, no, it's because I have this I have this fear of being fucking bedridden. Or being mm. trapped, and in you know, it, we're talking super, super supernatural powers here. If I'm stuck in a fucking barrel at the bottom of the ocean, but I have to sit there and just keep living, and I can't die until I turn a hundred, fuck off. You forgot the fact that you have to walk five miles a day. But it doesn't. So, okay. So if you're if you're walking five miles a day at age one hundred, if I'm walking five miles a day in a in a fucking circle room three feet wide. Stuck in, <laughs> in Gitmo or some shit. Like, no, I, I, I don't. My fears outweigh my hopes. Yeah, yeah. See, my yeah. See, I'm the opposite. My my hope is and, much larger. And than my, my luck, fear. my luck. My my wife would die at like 65 or 66 years old, and I would just yeah. end up spending the next 34 years fucking hating every day of my life. So, right, I, I don't right, know. Like right. that's that's a tough one, but I'm gonna have to go with the 65 because at least then I'll be goddamn happy. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so you and I definitely took the uh, opposite path <laughs> on that one. Um, yeah, that was because that was an easy one for me. All right, so your final one ends up being 159. Dun, dun, dun. Would you rather spend a week alone with your enemy or never be able to see your best friend again? Hmm. If I spent a week alone with my enemy, that would be six days by myself. <laughs> finding a place to bury the body <laughs> right i'm good with it let's go with that yeah you know ah damn uh yeah not being able to see my best friend again would really 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 fucking suck a week with my enemy it's only a week man dude who's uh, your enemy man like who, what enemies have you ever fucking had in your life Susan down the hall at work that stole your coffee the other day. Like who the fuck, who don't no, you get along with? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, it's hard for me to imagine. I would like, be somebody... interested just to see who it was that nature, that, that the powers that be selected to be your enemy. 
Right, right. Um, yeah, and I mean that's that that is a good point because if, if I did have an enemy and I was stuck a week with them, by the end of the third hour, I bet we're good friends. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. like I, I, yeah, I just have a natural tendency to to get along with people. So I, God, we are yeah, so I, opposites, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, so opposite. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I. So that was fun. Yeah, that was good. That was good. All right. How much time we got? We got like ten minutes left to talk about the 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 other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you wanted to talk about um, some new stuff that you're bringing into your house to uh, presumably make your home uh, more automated, more sci-fi. Uh, what, what's, uh, what kind of upgrade you got in the works there, bud? I hooked up a sense home or smart home or sense home energy monitor today. Okay. So I can see how much of power and how much electricity my family is using. Okay. Um, I, I think that, I, so it, it, it hmm. <laughs> okay, that's uh, very, very articulate of you. Uh, let, let me ask you this though: does does the app break down what the sources of the power usage is? Like, does it get granular? It does, but sometimes it takes quite a while. Uh, okay. What it does is power uh, appliances and things like that. They have signatures, electrical signatures, you know, signal signatures, where your washing machine uses this type of power at this frequency like this uh, this often for about this amount of time like it can learn the power usage patterns of what's going on in your house by constantly monitoring the power in the house sometimes it takes a long time from what i understand some people have had very bad results with that there's no way of telling the sense that this hey i'm turning this on right now listen for it oh i'm turning it off listen for it so you can learn what the fuck is going on with it mm -hmm. um and i think that's a limitation of the software and the technology that runs it um, but yeah, it, it'll, uh, it, it tracks all that. And uh, a certain muffins going off in the, in the chat now, uh, about all this stuff. So, um, yeah, it, yeah. It, but primarily what I wanted to use it for is twofold. One, we have a generator. We have pre frequent power outages. I don't want to say frequent. We have, we have more well, power frequent outages. Frequent than enough. It's not a rare occurrence. Right. It's, it's it's more common than uncommon. We have a generator and we want to be able to, I want to know how many amps my house is running on a regular basis so that I know what I'd need to cut off. If we ever need to go to generator power, I could run an ammeter on the lines and figure out, you know, okay, well this phase and this phase, and you can't really do both phases at the same time. Unless you have two ammeters or, or just make one big fucking loop and then hope the numbers match up. Um, but you can't do that like all the time and just monitor it for long periods of time. Like this tracks it every second of the, every day for as long as I own it. So there was that, you know, how many Watts of power am I actually pulling and will my gen, what, what do I need to cut off from my generator? If we need to go to generator power for an extended period of time, a couple of days or whatever. Okay. Part two, what in the, in my house is using energy that I don't think is using energy that I may not need to use as often as I'm using in order to cut down on my bill. Right. And we just had a huge renovation with the air conditioning and heating. So I'm interested to see how that affects it. Now I don't, I didn't have the sense installed before I got this stuff. So I can't really, you know, compare and contrast, but I can right. at least get right. an idea of what power, what the power usage is now. So there's that. That that right. that those are all the reasons. And I think those are probably the only valid reasons for buying it because it's 300 bucks. It's not cheap. It's not guaranteed to save you any money on your bill. And unless you're a data whore like I am, then it's not really going to give you any insights. It's not yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? So Yeah. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Like you are a total fucking number file data whore. Like this is this is like a justifiable expense to you just so that you can look at it. Right. Like, I bet you watch this thing in real time. Yeah. Just for the fuck of, like, I, man, I don't have anything else going on. Let me watch this for the next 10 minutes. Like, right, right I now, right now, right now, my electric bill is costing me 31 cents an hour. <laughs> okay. 31 cents an hour. That actually seems high to me. Uh, I mean, that's, 
that's fifteen hundred kilowatt or uh, 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 one point five kilowatt hours going on right now. So, and, and kilowatts anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah. So <laughs> fun times. Okay, cool. Um, so what is your uh, what is your primary uh, uh, like smart home ecosystem? Like, what do you run? Are you running a Nest setup? Are you running an Amazon uh, uh, Echoes? Yep. Setup? Amazon Echoes. Echoes. Yep. Okay. Now, how does this integrate? Like, can you can you bring that data into that that the, ecosystem? The current data, the current data is available through the Echoes. So I can ask how much electricity are we using right now? Um, mm. I can ask when was my last electrical spike? Like you can ask the things like oh, that. Okay. But you mm. and if you program it in your in in the app, like if it discovers things, like it already discovered my Hue bridge because it can connect to it and discovered all the Hue lights that I have in the house. You can ask it, hey, did I turn off the living room lights? And the ah. Echo will then talk to the sense, which I mean seems counterintuitive because the Echo could just talk to the Hue. But, sure, you sure. know, if, if you don't have the hue stuff, if it's different, like if, if if I leave my fridge open and it knows what my fridge is, it can say, hey, your fridge has been on like constantly for an hour now. You, you want to go check the door? You know, so right, there, there right, are right, those, right. those, but that's as it learns and it gets better. But and as it's learning, you know, I've had it for, on for less than 12 hours now. We're, yeah, less than 12 hours. So the, mm-hmm. it doesn't know shit. <laughs> like you can tell me what I'm right. currently using, but it doesn't know anything other than that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that seems pretty cool. I I don't think I would have a particular use case for it, particularly because I'm nowhere near the data whore <laughs> that right. you are. That and you have three people living in your house on a ranch style house that's not overly large. Like it's not a small house, but it's not sprawling. You know. Right. I, yeah. I have yeah. I have seven it, people living in a. 3,500 square foot, three story home. Like there's always power going on around here that I don't fucking know about. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 And, and to me, like I know what my, my power hog is and that's my air conditioner. If I right. just kept the HVAC, like if I just took the HVAC out of the equation, like my power bill would be like fucking 12 cents a month. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we don't use a whole lot I, of power, generally speaking, except for the HVAC. That thing just, I have four um, uh, standard screw-in light bulbs in my garage that that light my garage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're all LEDs, and that alone uses sixty-five watts of power between the four of them. Oh, wow! Yeah, yeah. Like I, yeah. you know, when your house is only typically running twelve hundred watts, and then you put on put on something that uses five percent of your energy, you don't want to leave that on too long, you know. So yeah, it, it's. Sure. We'll see how it goes. Uh, check back in. Put put a little reminder in your phone to check back in on April first, and we'll see how how it is. That's uh, that'd be six April months. April first. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So I, my home isn't particularly smart. Uh, especially what's the, by what's your the latest thing you have though? And and you also, by the way, your primary ecosystem is the Echo. Yes, it right. is the Echo, so the Echo system. <laughs> I not, see what we just did there. It, it, <laughs> we're not the ones that came up with it. That, that was that's some marketing <laughs> shit they came up with a long time ago. They just never really used. <laughs> right, right. Um, the latest thing that I added to it, what would that be? That might be actually the window unit AC that I've got in here. It's a GE uh, window unit that I have in my bar area. Uh, that thing I can control. Through okay. the Echo system. Now it's an actual uh, unit, uh, window unit. It's not a like like a, a a mobile unit that has like a little window duct. Oh no no no! It's it's absolutely a window unit. Okay, because yeah. I, I have one that has the window duct that's smart. That hooks up to the Echoes. You can tell it to turn on, turn off, adjust the temperature, yeah. all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it, uh, it's actually. Well, and then the other thing, the other probably newer than the air conditioner actually is my sound bar. Uh, in the living room, that thing is is um, echo compatible. Um, Do you use it that way thing, though? No, I don't. I didn't connect it because the only thing that I could pop that I would even think of possibly using it for is like tell it like call it living room, I guess, and right. just tell the you know, hey, play this song in the living room. Right. Like I mm, fine, but <laughs> I don't see a whole lot of value. There's uh, a lot of that. shit being being added to these systems that don't really have a major in, like return on the investment of being in the system. 
Yeah, yeah. But I'm glad that it's there versus not there. Like, yeah, I mean, if you just want to add that on top of the capabilities it has, okay. Yep. Sure. Like, add a bunch of stuff. Because I think it, I think it's it's compatible with the Google the, the Google ecosystem and, like, everything else, too. So, uh, I have a Google pro- it's, it's Probably. Somewhere. You have a what? You just went digital again. Um, I have a, a Google Home down there that's just not plugged in. I used it for like two weeks and said, uh, this this doesn't do the things that I already have the Echo set up to do. So let's not do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the so the Amazon system is just it is so freaking user friendly and plug and play. Like the things that we love about Apple, like with the the mobile devices and the you know, the Macs and the MacBooks and all of that sort of stuff, how everything just automatically is integrated and it just fucking works. Yep. Uh, my experience with uh, like home, like smart home tech and whatnot, like that's the Amazon system. Like yep. it is just so like everything just works with each other and it's, it's super it, simple and it works until you try to get, try to complicate it and then it doesn't work as well as it, anymore. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that's the I'm sure that's the case with with uh, with most things. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Right. Uh, so what is what is your most anticipated smart device? Um, well, it's definitely not the uh, the home the home security drone thing that Amazon's coming out with. It's I'm sure going to have fucking guns on it at the, some point. The Ring at home. Um. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. Can you imagine if the camera on that was good enough to track a fly, and then you just mounted a, a, a assault shotgun? Oh, just like a little zapper, like a. Oh my just, God, the, the, dude, that's the, coming, man! Like that's coming. That that's gonna be in version two point oh. Like it's it's gotta be. It's gonna be a bug zapper. <laughs> uh, man. Oh shit! What? Like I'm super excited that that product is coming out because I want to see how it fucking like wrecks somebody's house or I, how their cat jumps out of the ceiling and, and kills it or that's a um, new, it's going to be a new youtube category that i'm overly yeah. excited for yes i am super stoked for it yeah. i'm not buying one myself yeah. <laughs> first of all i'm afraid for my life <laughs> if i had it in my house but also i've got two dogs and two cats it's going to be a target like it's going to become a game um uh, hold on yeah you have two dogs, two cats, and a fully equipped bar with not infrequent guests. Well, I mean, these days, it's infrequent as hell. It's going to be a game. Either the cats are going to fight over it, the dogs will chase it down, or the adults would just try to swat it from each other. Like, <laughs> yes. It's not oh, surviving yeah. your house. Oh, yeah. That's gonna, that would happen for sure. Like, like oh, oh. Where, 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 where do you put the remote? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would say that my my the smart the smart home thing that I'm most looking forward to is actually not in the home; it's in the car, and that's that that ring camera for the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I, I concur with that. Like, I am looking forward to that. I almost certainly am going to be purchasing at least some version of that. Um, but yeah, for the home, man, I don't have anything on the immediate agenda to purchase for the house. Um, but I can imagine uh, jumping into the the Hue uh, ecosystem for the lights, start replacing lights. Um, yep. It's pr- honestly, it's probably that if it's not that, it's probably some home security something like adding a camera or adding a um, like a floodlight system or something yeah. like that is most likely where I would go. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I I have ideas for you, but I I don't know, I, I'm not going to share them on air because of this. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, hey, one last thing, real quick, before we get out of here. Did you hear that uh, that uh, Trump's girl, uh, what's her name, t- tested positive for COVID nineteen, and now Trump and Melania are self quarantining. Oh, you're uh, talking about uh, Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did hear that earlier today. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So that's interesting. There is some balance to the universe after all. Um, yeah. So again, I'm not, I'm not coming on the situation except to say that it's interesting. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's fucking ironic. Isn't it ironic? And I love okay. irony. 
Uh, so if you, if people want to follow your irony and your political hot takes, where might they find those? <laughs> oh, you can see them on Twitter. They're there. They are fucking there. Um, hey, real quick, since we're talking about my Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. Which is e- your Ethan Kane on Twitter, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. Uh, huge shout out, and I mentioned it earlier, but huge shout out to Chrissy Teigen, who her and her husband, uh, John Legend, uh, lost a baby this this week. Uh, a little mm-hmm. lost of pregnancy, whatever terminology you want to use. And instead of just keeping quiet about it, she was very uh, forthcoming with the symptoms leading up to her hospitalization and what all happened there. And now they are back home, I believe. And she is letting people know how she feels. Um, it's a conversation that needs to be had. If you are a parent, I can almost guarantee you've experienced some some sort of miscarriage or uh, false hope of pregnancy or whatever else. It's fucking devastating. And I can just say that from my perspective, I didn't even like my ex-wife that much. And I was devastated when we lost ours. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It, it, uh, just a huge shout. I love it when women are forthcoming with this shit and it starts a conversation so we can end these stigmas and she's doing that and it's fucking awesome. So huge shout out to her. I mean, she's never going to see this, her or John Legend are never going to fucking see this, but um, right, right. but yeah, my sympathy with them and uh, just fucking keep. I mean, if you're if you're a chick out there, fucking <coughs> chick it up, dude. Like you guys keep like this whole Me Too shit. Nothing else has gotten it to where the women in social media are just not fucking hiding shit anymore. It's awesome. Yeah, I um, <laughs> yeah, I see. I'm not a. I'm not much of a celebrity follower. Like, I don't care really what you've got going on in your life. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I, I had this thing happen to me. Like, I don't give a shit, right? Uh, but I did see. Um, I did see Chrissy Teigen's um, post last night, and uh, subsequently John Legend and whatnot. And uh, that one, yeah, that one got me, man. That one got me. Um, yeah. I echo 90% of everything that you just said. Like it's, it's fucking real. It's, it's, um, it's worth talking about. It's not, nothing really good comes from hiding it because the only people that are hurt by that are the people that are hiding it typically. Um, it's rough, man. It's rough. It's rough. It's rough. Uh, Chrissy Teigen has the, the privileged position of three seconds after posting something, she's got 47 million likes and comments and, whatnot so Mm -hmm. um but like you know people that we're friends with they're lucky to get 10 likes on a photo or a comment um after 10 days you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um just know that your friends give a shit Uh, your friends care uh your family cares usually but your friends definitely care your friends (laughs) definitely care and I hope that you have somebody that can support you as you go through uh, similar things um, because it's one of those things that just, it just happens. And I, Curtis called it in the chat. Like it's one of those things that's all too common. Like yep. it's incredibly common and there's no shame in it. Um, find, find somebody to talk to about it. Uh, get, get the love that you deserve. Uh, yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. Ah, Stuff. And if people want to give you the love you deserve. Where can they find you? Yeah, man. RM underscore Del Noche. That's where I'm at on Twitter. Yeah. Like, uh, add me as a friend. Say something nice. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I guarantee I'll say something nice back to you. If you say something nice to me, I'll say something nice to you. There you go. <laughs> and you can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Get alerts for all the stuff that we have going on. Um, uh, at Rich Misery, R I T U A L M I S E or Y, and you can stop by our Discord, RMP, or what the fuck am I doing here? Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. There we, you go. Every week we do a live chat interaction on Discord, and you can be a part of it. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. We are, as the kids say these days, the accessible part of Diamond Club. <laughs> Yes, as are like every member of the stream team, the Diamond Club stream team, are uh, the accessible wing of Diamond Club. <laughs> There's a tagline in there somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. Uh, but if you want to know where we're at, ritualmisery.com for all the links to all of our stuff and many ways to support us. 
Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And uh, just let, just so you know, we're live every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific on uh, DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Virtual Misery. I think Kent already said all that, but I'm saying it again anyway. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this, this has been your Virtual Misery Podcast. See ya! Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. I legit thought you had just uh you were like holding the pose, the diamond club pose, uh throwing the yeah, diamonds yeah. and just holding it, trying to look like you were glitched, and then realized you were actually glitched. Like <laughs> Oh man, that's fucking funny.